groundbreaking is the act of experiencing the past and the present simultaneously. Sounds like a neat trick, doesn't it? But it's not as difficult as you might think once you understand the fundamentals. The first thing to know is that time itself is an illusion. So many philosophers embrace the idea that time is an illusion or that time doesn't really exist. The idea is so common nowadays, you've most likely heard it in conversations, movies, TV shows or read it somewhere. But as much as this sounds like pop psychology or fortune cookie wisdom, there actually is something to it. But what do we mean when we say time is an illusion? Exactly how does this illusion work and how do we break it? When you have a chance, try this little exercise. Start watching a TV show or movie. Something with live action as opposed to animated content is preferable. While watching, take note that in your mind you're accepting a reproduction or simulation of a story or event full of objects and people, some staying in motion, some staying still, some making sounds, and some staying silent. To an extent, you're accepting the content as real, or at the very least, you're processing it in your mind similarly to the way you would process an actual event. You try and understand it. You think about it. It can make you feel a certain way viewing it. In this way, a TV show or movie parallels the real world. And you recognize this. You instinctively know this. But there is another way that the show or movie parallels reality that you may not be so aware of. Select a part of the program that has some motion in it and doesn't change camera angle or cut to another scene right away. Now, pause the picture. When you've studied it sufficiently and taken notice of everything that's occurring at that moment, let the video presentation move forward a little bit and pause it again. Now, even though you see the same objects, the same people and so on, some or all of those people and objects have changed position. In reality, nothing actually moved around. What you are seeing is a different picture that has some similarities to the one you viewed before it. You realize the still frame you looked at before is, so to speak, its own universe, and the one you're looking at now is another one. The physical reality is not that much different. What you perceive in the physical reality are objects and people moving about. What's really happening is that every split second of the universe as you perceive it is a universe of its own. Each one of these universes is perceived by you for a split second, then replaced with a universe that looks similar to it with a slight change in it. So even in the physical reality, when you see a ball moving from one place to another, you aren't seeing the same ball. You're seeing continual recreations of that ball in a new version of the physical reality with the ball in a different position each time. Back to the television show. Now that you've looked at the new scene, reverse back to the old scene. Tell yourself, this is the past. Then forward to the second scene you still framed and say to yourself, this is the present. Now let's have some real fun. Let's take what we remember from the past frame and imagine it right next to the frame you're viewing now. You are now viewing the past and the present at the same time. Now, please don't go digging up every past upset you've had and experience it in the present, knowing only this tiny bit of how Trom therapy works. It's not going to end well for you and your mental health if you do. There's a procedure for doing this properly so as to preserve your sanity. You'll need to read about this in the TROM 2023 manual and get through levels 1 and 2 of TROM first to prepare yourself. Here's another thing you can try. You can take the first frame you looked at and look at it again. You can alter how it appears to you by squinting at it or looking at it cross-eyed. You could take a picture of it with a camera or your phone and put it into a computer program that alters photos. You could do many things to alter this still picture, this universe, so to speak. Then, you could advance to the second scene you looked at and note that none of what you did with the first scene changes the second one bit. 
we learn several things from doing this exercise. We learn that time is an illusion, what that illusion is, that the past has never truly gone away, and if we alter the past, it does not change anything in the present. So never mind what you've seen in any of those science fiction movies that involve time travel. They are entertainment, not truth. You don't just live in one universe that is constantly changing. You have experienced uncountable universes that change slightly one after the other, just like it would in a motion picture presentation, and all those universes are still there. Many believe that the only memories we have are recordings of the universe around us in our brains. But consider this. You can recall something, and instead of just looking at a recording of it, you actually visit that moment in time, because it's still there, ready for you to view again, just like a still frame of a movie. You don't have to completely understand all of this right now, or even believe me. Once you engage in trauma therapy, especially at level 3, what I'm saying will become quite obvious to you and will help make sense of some phenomena you experience while engaging in trauma exercises. It's no secret that your past affects how you view the present, especially when there have been upsets. Many times you are told, let it go or just get over it, as if one could just snap their fingers and resolve their past with those magic words. Well, if it were just that easy, there would never be any need for psychotherapists, ministers, meditation, or other mental and spiritual practices. So exactly how can one get over the past so they can live fully in the moment, get on with their lives, and live freely and happily? To do that, we have to first understand what happens with us in our mind and in life. As you experience universes one after another, like I mentioned, you take note of certain people, objects, events and data as important. Either you decide something is important, or the idea of its importance is enforced upon you. You could say the mind is a collection of these bookmarks, strewn across the past, ready for recall when you desire such, or pop up on their own when something in the present triggers it. Where there is a disagreement, trauma or emotional upset, the resultant conflict forms what we call a mass in our minds. Now, you've heard this word mass before used to mean many things, like a mass of people or a mass of objects. When I say mass in terms of mental mass, I'm talking about a very, very small amount of substance in your mind that stays there as a result of a trauma, disagreement or upset, and your resistance to such upset. To put it simply, upsets result in mental mass getting stored in your mind. Right now you have tiny masses in your mind as a result of these conflicts and upsets. Quite a few of them if you've led any sort of normal human life. Trauma exercises reduce the importance of the past and dissolves these mental masses, leaving you more alive and aware in general. But there is a downside. A person having accumulated such a mental mass in his lifetime not only gets used to it, but also believes he must have some sort of mental mass in order to maintain his mental balance. Dissolve too much of this mental mass and that mental balance goes away and he will find himself attracting all sorts of terrible things to him in an attempt to replace what he's lost. This is why the first thing a trauma learns is how to create non-harmful mental masses to replace what he's lost and does this by creating them in a 360 degree sphere around him over and over again. He also places creations around himself considering someone else put them there. It's that simple. He does this before, during and after each exercise and in doing so maintains his mental balance. The exercise in itself is highly beneficial in other ways, but for the purpose of this presentation, I'm just going to mention this one. You can learn more about the specifics of how it's performed and why in the TROM 2023 manual or level one videos on this channel. Once he's learned how to create his own mental masses and gotten some practice doing it, he progresses to level two, which is an elementary form of time breaking. He takes an object from his past and views it next to an object in his current environment. 
Mind you, he does this mentally with the past object. He does not physically take some old thing and place it next to a new thing. He then notes differences and similarities between the past object and the present object while continuing to view them simultaneously. The simplest of evaluations of a past object versus a present object starts him down a road of being able to differentiate the past from his present. It also breaks the illusion of time, much the same way that was demonstrated in the exercise I spoke about earlier with the television. If this all sounds pointless and silly, then imagine this. Someone has an incident where he is threatened at knife point. Later on in life, he gets uneasy when he sees knives. One is bitten by a dog, and therefore later on is afraid of dogs, and might be afraid of obviously friendly ones. He might not even be aware that the presence of knives or dogs in his environment what's making him feel uneasy all the time. But if one compares a knife from such a past incident while simultaneously viewing a knife in the present, you can see how after such a thorough evaluation he's apt to be more relaxed about knives and can differentiate between someone attacking him with a knife and someone simply cutting their steak at the dinner table rather than continually being afraid of knives on a level below his awareness. Please don't try this right now. It's important to know that when one starts level two of Trom, he selects objects from moments in his life that aren't so upsetting as being threatened with a knife or being bitten by a dog. He will work his way up to it eventually, but he does so when he's ready. In any case, do not attempt any of this until you've studied the materials regarding level one and two of Trom. I can't emphasize enough how important this is as when one engages in time-breaking, even if it's as simple as doing it with the most seemingly innocent of objects from the past, there is still some upset involved in doing so. The upset passes as the person progresses through the exercise, with the goal being that the person can time-break the object comfortably, thus releasing the past object's effect on him. Once the individual is confident that he can time-break any object from his past without upset, he moves on to people and does the same thing. Once one completes level two, he gains great relief as his mind is no longer confusing present objects and people with past objects, people, and the events associated with them. He has thoroughly evaluated portions of his past against his present and freed himself of the ill effects. On level three, one moves into time-breaking full events as opposed to just the objects and people in them. He experiences the past events whilst maintaining awareness of his present environment. He does this keeping in mind that there is more to an event than just the physical sensations. There are emotions. There are intentions. There can be quite a bit to just one moment in time and one need not confront all of it at once. He can at first just see it. Then he can bring in the sounds, touch sensations, and other physical sensations and let those spring up and then de-intensify. He can re-experience the emotions of himself and others, one at a time, while maintaining awareness of his present surroundings until those de-intensify. He can ask himself, what am I trying to do in this scene? And he can also ask himself, what are others trying to do in this scene? Once the incident fades away back into the past, he stops. He's done. You don't try and get it back once it's faded. You don't want to continue longer than necessary. That's how time-breaking works on level 3 of Tron. That's how I would explain it if I wrote the manual myself. But I still want you to read the proper instructions from the manual written by Dennis Stevens and get through levels 1 and 2 before you try it. That's all for now, and thank you for your time. To continue learning more about the resolution of the mind, also known as TROM, take a moment to download the free ebook from this video's description. Don't forget to subscribe so as not to miss any further videos. This has been a presentation of DIY Salvation.
don't just use your mind, resolve it. Hi, I'm Alison Tandry. I hope you enjoyed our video on the resolution of the mind, also known as TROM. Be sure not to miss the next video on levels 4 and 5. We offer a free program and are run by volunteers. If you wish to contribute, we need help in promoting TROM and with voiceovers. Make sure to let your friends and family know about us. Our only reward for our work is the satisfaction that you know what we know now. Thanks for watching.